Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, how to write a novel. Everyone has at least one book in them. Yes, most likely it is a book based on their lives. And then, if we're lucky, influenced by fictional events. In this Human Meme podcast, we'll explore how to write a novel, a right piece of fiction. But first, we need to make sure you are up to speed on some of the ideas we'll be sharing here. You may want to pause now and listen to two other Human Meme podcasts before you listen to this one, just to get the foundational support for what is about to be discussed here. The first podcast is Understanding Aristotle's Poetics. You'll get the fundamentals of storytelling there. And then listen to De Anima and the Demon Soul for a further excursion into dramatic theory and the structuring of the human condition. If you haven't listened to those two podcasts yet, go to humanbeam.com and do a search and you'll find them. I'll pause a moment so you can get over there and start listening. Okay, then. You're still here. So let's begin. There's an old saying in writing and dramatic theory that I've shared with you before here in this Human Meme podcast, and it's worth sharing one more time and one more time and one more time. Don't write what you know. Write what you do not know. And let me explain why. A long time ago, I had a writing student who was young, Asian, and gay. He had many experiences in his short but long life. Every script, every short story, every novel, every screenplay he wrote was about a gay, Asian boy coming out to his parents. Now, sure, some of the frames of his stories changed, The location was perhaps different, different characters, but the center of every script was the young Asian boy coming out to his parents as gay. And the word boy as the descriptor was his word, not mine. And okay, all of that's fine. If you're using writing to expose your inner demons... Or if you are writing as a sort of regressive therapy system, yes, yes, it's all fine. But for a reader, for an audience, telling the same story over and over again becomes dreary and self-defeating. Other students in our class were also tired of reading his work every week because they always knew the core story and how it would all end up in the end, in tears of acceptance and forgiveness. So what is the young, tormented writer supposed to do? I say, write what you do not know. And young people really don't know much. They are experienced in life and sort of sheltered and not wise. And please understand I say that as a conditional exemption. Yes, there are many young kids today who are smarter and wiser than everyone else. We're not talking about those outliers right now. So writing what you do not know is a much more interesting theory than writing what you do know and what you have learned or experienced. Because if you are a talented enough writer to rewrite your own coming-out story 12 different ways in schemes and arenas, then you are talented enough to tell someone else's story with great earnestness and veracity and verisimilitude, 
and empathy. Adapting your experience and your knowledge beyond you is the everything of what makes a great novel important for generations beyond your living. Use your suffering, employ your gifts, and use your insight into something beyond you and your experience. Understanding the world is not the role of the writer in the world. Comprehending the shattering of the human condition is everything the writer must own. The writer must intimately understand suffering and pain and death and the moon and murder and blood because the opposite beings of them, sunshine and joy and bliss and warmth and summer rain, all belong to the healthy and the unwritten and the unpublished. As you contemplate your novel that is not about you or inspired by your life, you have to catch on to a grand idea. The grand idea differs from the ordinary idea by its magnitude of passion and its compression of compassion. Everything must be at stake and everything is in play. There are no safe harbors, no safe spaces. Everything is in danger. And where most first-time amateur writers fail is in the execution of picking the right idea. And then they stick with that bad idea until the bitter, unsuccessful closing page. If you are stewing on an idea and it is not working in your head, get rid of it. Start over. The best novels in history have stewed inside the mind for a long time. Years. Many years, sometimes. Because those ideas swim around and they stay there demanding all your attention in every inactive thought. Poor novels are written down on shards of paper and quickly forgotten. Don't be afraid of thinking. Rumination and contemplation are your friends. Think it all out before you sit down to write anything down on paper or keyboard. Once you have that grand idea and you've thought it all out and structured it in your mind, that is the time to start writing. And write it all at once as furiously as you can to keep the tempo right and the intention of your novel alive. Write that novel in two weeks or two months instead of two years. Yes, you can and you will do it. As you begin to write your story, the plot, what happens? The plot is the most important thing to centering your novel that will captivate people in many dynamic ways. And characters drive your plot. And if you are writing it right, your characters may take you down a different pathway than you are expecting. And that's good. Go with it. Let the people you create take on the plot and let them be in charge of the direction of your story. Because all of that means you have created characters in a plot line who have their own importance and something important to them is at stake. Now some, or all of this, is now living beyond you and you are only an observer as the author. And you are just the note-taker to history, as you just write down what happens. And some may argue you have become your own god, and everyone else in your novel is independently acting on your behalf. 
but with their own awful, dire interests at heart. As you continue to write and observe, don't worry about the fanciful or if your plot changes from the Old West to outer space. Who cares? As long as it all makes sense in the world of your novel. Anything and everything is possible. And surprises are always good. People read to be entertained. Minds get bored. People want challenges. Offer them a respite from their ordinary lives. Allow your wonderment and mindfulness and amazement and inspiration of the world to infect them and let them bring themselves into the journey of your characters. And remember, if you are bored writing your novel, your readers will be bored in triplicate. Always surprise yourself. Make yourself laugh and cry and weep and wail. It's all good for the novel of you. Now, once that first novel is done, you are actually freer to write a second novel. Because your adapted and translated story has been told, and now you can bury those demons. And now you can really get interested in exploring the world of words beyond your initial common reach. Autobiography cannot be avoided in most novels. But the more you write, the more you publish, the more effective you will be at unmasking yourself and tricking yourself into denial and exploration. Let it flow. Everything flows. Your 50th book will be 100 times better than your first book. And your 100th book will be a thousand times better than the 50th book. Because that's the undeniable way of the written world. Every moment builds upon itself to create experience and expectation. And when you are able to blend those two ideas, you are a professional writer with something more at stake than sales and likes and fame, and followers. You have created your own everlasting legacy. You are immortal. Oh, and in closing, here's another warning. Stay away from writers groups, both in person and online. Those groups are nothing but a time suck. You need to be writing not talking about writing. And honestly, other authors tend to be unhelpful, and they are hypercritical of work other than their own. And who has time for that? Who needs feedback on what works and what doesn't work when you know yourself precisely what is working and what is not effective? And if you have no idea what's working and what's not working, then you're not quite a writer yet. Leave the meeting and go back to stewing on ideas. You weren't properly cooked yet. And the danger in serving undeserving ideas is that the overexposure to other minds can kill your passion and wound your ambition. Stay within yourself. Get the work done. Write a thousand words a day and judge yourself harshly. Remove all your favorite lines and let your plot expand and allow your characters to breathe without you and you will do great. For in the word is you and in you is the world. Thank you for listening. Be a human me.